Right, uh, we're here at the uh, Scottish Railway Preservation Society at Bowness in this really incredible museum. Now, I'm just uh, walking up to a travelling post office from the look of the livery. It's from the 1970s or 1980s. But it's certainly unmistakable. So, yeah, here we are actually in the carriage, you know, having a look round. <laughs> look at that, there's a pigeonhole here for mail to Trumpton. And, oh, Hogwarts Castle as well. Yeah, this is also the international mail. And yeah, that's it. Uh, the words of this poem are kind of going through your head. This poem from 1936. Yep, Night Mail by W. H. Auden. I say the words to kind of go through your heads, and of course these uh, sacks that would be caught by a net, you know, at whatever the next destination for the mail was. Oh, uh, yeah, more international destinations. Oh, and Neverland as well. Right, but as I say, the words are W. H. Auden. Do kind of go through your head when we are on this train. So, anyway, yeah, I say I think it's time for a poetry recital. This is a night mail crossing the border, bringing the check and the postal order. Letters for the rich, letters for the poor. The shop at the corner, the girl next door, pulling up Beetuk, a steady climb. The gradient's against her, but she's on time. Past cotton grass and moorland boulder, shoveling white steam over her shoulder. Snorting, snorting noisily as she passes, silent miles of wind-bent grasses. Birds turn their heads as she approaches, stare from the bushes at her blank-faced coaches. Sheepdogs, they cannot turn her course. They slumber on with paws across. But in the farm she passes, no one wakes. But a jug in her bedroom gently shakes. Dawn freshens, her climb is done. Down towards Glasgow she descends. Towards the steam tugs yelping down a glade of cranes. Towards the fields of apparatus, the furnaces. Set on the dark, the dark plain like gigantic chessmen. All Scotland waits for her, in dark glens beside pale green lochs, men long for news. Letters of thanks, letters from banks, letters of joy from girl and boy, receipted bills and invitations to inspect new stock or to visit relations, and applications for situations and timid lovers' declarations, and gossip, gossip from all the nations, news circumstantial, news financial, Letters with holes they snaps to enlarge in. Letters with faces scrawled in the margin. Letters from uncles, cousins and aunts. Letters to Scotland from the south of France. Letters of condolence to highlands and lowlands. Written on paper of every hue. The pink, the violet, the white and the blue. The chatty, the catty, the boring, the adoring. The cold and official and the hearts outpouring. Clever, stupid, short and long. The typed and the printed and the spell all wrong. Thousands are still asleep, dreaming of terrifying monsters, or a friendly tea beside the band in Cranston's or Crawford's. Asleep in working Glasgow, asleep in well-set Edinburgh, asleep in Granite Aberdeen, they continue their dreams. But, but shall wait soon on hope for letters, and none will hear the postman's knock without a quickening of the heart. For who can bear to feel himself forgotten?